At this time, I invite you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Good morning. I'm Dr. Stephen Schaefer, and I am so proud to serve as the executive principal here at James Lawson High School, Nashville's newest high school. This time next year, students will be enjoying this space that you're sitting in now, known as the Commons. They will gather with friends, they will sit and study, they will enjoy materials from the library behind me, or participate in special events like we do today. Upstairs, students will eat inside, our, inside or outside while enjoying the Hills of Bellevue from our View Cafe. We have three floors of modern classroom spaces dedicated to academics where students will pursue high school and college credit courses. We got specialty classrooms, culinary kitchen and restaurant, television studio, engineering lab, health science lab, where students will work with business partners to earn industry certifications. We've got a phenomenal performing arts space dedicated for band, orchestra, choir, rock band, drama, and dance. Are y'all ready to come back to school yet? <laughs> And students will showcase their talents in the 500-seat Lawson Performing Arts Center, which features stadium seating and a fly loft, and it's equipped to host a full Broadway show. The Lawson Lightning Athletic Teams will bring excitement to this campus, compete in all TAA sanctioned sports. We have our Thunderdome Gymnasium. We have our Lightning Stadium and other sports fields down the hill. We are so thankful, Mayor Cooper, the Metro Council, for dedicating the funding for this incredible facility. We are so blessed. Also, a special thank you to Dr. Adrian Battle and the MNPS School Board for their support and advocacy throughout this project. Finally, due to the amazing work of folks like Messer Construction, Hastings Architects, and the MMPS Construction Office, and all of those folks that worked with them, we are excited that we will be open for the 23-24 school year on time. And when students enter here August 8th for the first day of school, the words of our namesake, Reverend James Lawson, will greet them. Through nonviolence, courage displaces fear. Love transforms hate. Acceptance dissipates prejudice. Hope ends despair. Peace dominates war. Faith reconciles doubt. Here at James Lawson, students will become the leaders who bring these very ideals and the future of this great city. For those looking for a school home, we invite you to join us at James Lawson High School. And the best news, our tuition is free. <laughs> At this time, please welcome lead pastor of Bellevue United Methodist Turk Church, Pastor Brian Marcoulier. It is an honor to introduce our vocalists who will be singing the national anthem today. One, the duo, is pioneering their way from hip hop to country as one of the first black mother-daughter duos, becoming one of CMT's Next Women of Country, class of 2023. Takitha and Promise Supreme desire to create music that's for everyone, for all walks of life. They seek to lead with love, compassion, and empathy every day. I celebrate their presence today, and I'm honored to welcome them to this stage and to the Bellevue community.
word of thanksgiving uh, for Takitha and Prana Supreme. Um, they were accompanied by gifted songwriter and guitarist Drew Castle. Thank you for the, being with us today. My name is Brian Marcoulier, and I have the joy of serving as a pastor within the Bellevue community. I serve as the pastor of Bellevue United Methodist Church, one of the oldest congregations in the Bellevue community at 214 years old. Most known today is the home of the Bellevue Community Food Bank, as well as home to the first mobile housing navigation center in partnership with Metro Nashville Community Care Fellowship and Bellevue United Methodist Church. It is an honor to welcome you to our beautiful community and to our new high school, James Lawson High School. As we invoke the source of our faith and learning, I'm hopeful for the critical thinking and problem solving, the inquiry and creativity and the determination that will be born through this place of learning. May we hear the voices and actions of our young people who are already working to lead and transform our city, state, and nation. I invite you to join me in this moment of invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather before you this day to give thanks for the gifts you have entrusted to us and to seek your guidance as we navigate the opportunities and challenges of our day. We are grateful for the gifts of faith and learning and for the ways in which they help us to better understand ourselves and the world around us. We give thanks for the community organizers and activists among us, such as John Lawson, who work tirelessly to promote justice and equality in our communities. Grant us the courage and determination to follow their example, to speak out against injustice and oppression, and to work towards a more equitable and compassionate society. We ask that you help us embrace the beauty of diversity, to dedicate ourselves to inclusivity and to seek unity as we love our neighbors as ourselves. Grant us ears to hear the cry of your children, hands willing to reach out to all who are hurting and feet willing to march for peace and healing in our city. Give us a vision as we labor for the common good and may our striving help us glimpse the beloved redemptive community. We ask for your blessing upon our city leaders, including Mayor John Cooper and upon all who work toward the betterment of our community. May we be guided by your wisdom and sustained by your grace as we commit ourselves to this work. And, in the, and, and so as we pray and in the words of the hymn, may our faith redeem the blunder of believing that our thought has displaced the grounds for wonder which the ancient prophets taught. May our learning curb the error which unthinking faith can breed, lest we justify some terror with an antiquated creed. Blend, O oh God, our faith and learning, till they carve a single course, till they join as one returning, praise and thanks to you, their source. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. I know it's gloomy and rainy. Can I get a look? Good morning. Good morning. All right. It is an honor and a privilege for me to stand here in a high school that's been dedicated to one of the pioneer human beings that impacted my life, James Lawson. Just that particular name sends a ripple effect in my body and gives me the spirit of hope. So thank you for all of you who've made James Lawson High School possible. My name is Kassar Abdullah. I would like to begin with a prayer. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Dear Lord, the creator of the universe and the heavens, the most compassionate. Bless us with the ability to see the truth and to do what is right and advise each other towards liberation and justice. As our leaders work together for a brighter future, guide them to be just. Bless them with the knowledge, wisdom, strength, and courage to be righteous leaders among the people and the planet. 
protect our elected officials who are fighting for the people, like Brother Jones, Sister Gloria, and others, the public servants and the citizens of Nashville. Help them with the wisdom to make the right decision in a timely manner. The courage to ensure that Nashville, Tennessee becomes the liberation city. Dear Lord, heal the wounded hearts from the Covenant School to the streets of North Nashville. Please, it wouldn't hurt to also get some consistency in the weather. <laughs> How many more layers does a sister got to wear to keep up with the weather? <laughs> Let us lead in the spirit of compassion, peace, and unity. Let the spirit extend from the citizens to the elected officials, from the water streams of Nashville to the beautiful valleys and hills of Tennessee. Let us breathe. Let us stand firmly on justice and truth. Let us serve towards liberation because it is a divine commandment from you. Dear Lord, help us make the right decision. Amen. Councilwoman Quante Toombs of District 2, and I want to thank you for taking time this morning out of your busy schedule to come together to hear about the state of our wonderful city, Nashville. As a community, we have persevered through another year. We have experienced hills and valleys, joy and sadness, victories and defeats. Yet we still stand as resilient as ever. Our ability to pick ourselves up despite our differences and press forward together is key to the strength of Nashville and makes us who we are. As we continue to mourn with, as well as keep our covenant family lifted, let us work together to bring about the reforms, such as common sense gun laws, needed to keep our communities, especially our children, safe. Today, let us also reflect on how we can make Nashville even better. As we listen to where we've been, where we are, and where we are headed as a city. And what a great place to do that reflection, a high school named after the legendary James Lawson. At this time, I'd like to introduce two individuals who had a hand in naming this beautiful new high school. Dr. Carmen Reese Foster, Assistant Professor of Practice, University of Tennessee College of Social Work, and Mr. Eli Foster, Trauma-Informed Specialist, Metro Nashville Public Schools. educators who believe deeply in the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. James Lawson. His legacy will inspire generations of Nashvillians towards unity, equity, and hope for a better tomorrow. A name is important. It provides identity. It goes before us and shows what we and our parents who came before us value. It gives meaning to this space, and it will last multiple lifetimes. Ultimately, it reinforces the values we believe as members of the Nashville community. Dr. Lawson was the architect of nonviolent resistance in the United States. 
He is a teacher and has taught some of the greatest names in the civil rights movement. Names such as Diane Nash, John Lewis, and Bernard Lafayette right here in the great city of Nashville. In 1957, Dr. King encouraged Dr. Lawson to come to Nashville because of the tyranny and hostility of racial oppression that existed throughout the South. In his own words, Dr. Lawson says that he came to challenge four forces of darkness that diminish the dignity of every human being. Those four forces are racism, sexism, violence, and plantation capitalism. Dr. Lawson challenged these very violent systems through nonviolent direct action. The world was trying to pit people of different races, different religions, different socioeconomic classes against each other, but Dr. Lawson was convinced that fear and injustice are overcome by love. Love of God, love for one another, and love for justice. You see, when we love each other, even our enemy, that love will dispel the darkness, bringing in light and hope. Every day, the students walk right there through those doors. They will walk into this building and take on the values of love, hope, and nonviolence. May the future students of James Lawson High School shine a light of hope in our city. And may Nashvillians everywhere continue to be inspired and transformed by the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. James Lawson. Thank, Thank you. you. Edward Ho, one of the three elders of Middle Tennessee Chinese Church of Christ. It is my great honor to be invited by the office of Mayor John Cooper and to be included in the State of Metro program of Nashville 2023. I'm glad to be here to support Mayor John Cooper and his great team and to join hand in hand with you all to make our city, Nashville, a better city for all, which we call home. It is my privilege now to introduce 2023 Nashville Poet Laureate, Lachlan Cook. to people who aren't real. I pull them from thin air, conjure them onto my phone screen, and write. I have written piece upon piece about this imaginary love of mine, how they remind me to take my meds. They open doors for me and drive me places, walk me to class and hold my books, tug my hands away from my cuticles when I pick anxiously at them, smile as I go on tangents about movies and never complain that I talk too much. They go to church with me, not all the time, not every Sunday, but they go with me and my church family knows them. They go to football games with me, take the three hour drive to Memphis, the car, our own little eternity of laughter, wake up early and spend the day in a sea of deep blue. They go to bookstores with me, wander the stacks as I hand them book after book after book. And I stare at records with them, bickering playfully over sound quality. I stumble, trip, collide, fall in love with them. My favorite movie is Midsummer. 
It's a snobby horror written and directed by Ari Aster. I love how many times I've seen it and still don't understand it. The details, stars, and the sky of the film, you won't notice the constellations until they align. My family is one of the most important things in my life. They tether me to my plane of existence. One of my cousins is 14 and the funniest person I know. We sit and talk for hours, catching each other up on our lives. She keeps my secrets and I keep hers. My name is Lachlan, I'm 16, I write poetry, I'm a transgender teen, my rights are on the line. My teachers can't put pride flags up in their classroom, so how do I know I am welcome? Some of my favorite books, the books that have made me feel impossibly seen, have been deemed inappropriate, unsuitable, dangerous. My church can't show their love for LGBTQ people without being picketed. People with signs broadcasting their hatred and fear. Because one of our bedrock beliefs is that God loves everybody unconditionally and we make it known. As an American, I have the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I believe in these values, in the idea that people should lead the life they want so long as they aren't hurting anyone along the way. People tell me we all have these rights and then tell me I am dangerous. I still sleep with a teddy bear. You wanna know what's dangerous? American classrooms. When I go into a new classroom for the first time, I subconsciously decide where I could hide or think maybe running is better. I have never lived in a world in which this was not a threat. I was six when Sandy Hook happened. I've been terrified of going through a school shooting for years now, since I was old enough to really process what it meant. I have nightmares about them sometimes, and I've listed them as one of my biggest fears. I have texted my parents what I thought might be a goodbye enough times that it doesn't feel as scary anymore, because it's just the reality. This doesn't need to be our reality. This should have never been the reality for millions of children and their parents. Bulletproof backpacks are sold in the back to school section and you can't see what guns are doing to our country? You are so afraid of all the wrong things, you cannot see the suffering in front of you. It seems like you ignored when God calls us to bring justice to the gates of our cities and to above all love thy neighbors. I am your neighbor and all I am asking is to be safe. Not just some victim in a slasher fic that my Christian family has to bury. I am asking to freely love. Keep us safe, keep us safe, keep us safe. Am I next? Am I next? Am I next? Why is it on the children to beg not to be shocked? pretty powerful. I don't know who I speak to about the order of things. Shalom Alechem. I think if Kassar is going to go Arabic, we're going to have to practice a little Hebrew. I say Shalom Alechem. You say Alechem Shalom. Alechem Shalom. Let's try it. Shalom Alechem. Yeah. In these here parts, we translate that as may peace be upon you all. Uh, my name is Philip Rice. They actually call me Rabbi Flip. I'm a member of the clergy of Congregation Micah. Uh, we also live in the Bellevue community, many of us, for about 520 plus families that explore uh, and celebrate Jewish life, uh, and we seek to build community and help heal the world. Um, in our community at Myco, we sort of define spirituality as what you feel, theology is what you believe, and religion is what you do. Um, I'm going to begin my brief remarks by thanking Mayor Cooper for his service and for all that he really has accomplished. For me, he is a religious man. 
I know nothing about his faith background, but based on the fact that we've got this new football stadium and we're standing here in this school that's about to open, it's clear that he knows how to get things done. Uh, it's, it's an honor to stand before you, Mayor, and from in front of all those that are assembled. Quickly, before I invoke the name of the Holy and ask for blessings, I want to explain that at the very beginning of the Jewish sacred scriptures called the Talmud, it says, Moshe kibel Torah mi Sinai, umisorali Hoshua, that Moses received Torah at Sinai and transmitted it to Joshua. Aha. The Hoshua lezekenim. And then Joshua passed it on to the elders, and the elders taught it to the prophets. And then the prophets shared its wisdom with the members of the government, the members of the great assembly, the governing body at the time. You see, they inherited it, they studied it, and they said three things. They said, Hevu mitunim badin, be deliberate. Thoughtful in judgment. The Amidu Talmidim Arbe. Raise up many disciples. Build schools. The Asu Siyag the Torah. And build a fence around the Torah. Protect the centers of learning and those who study in them. So it's in this vein that I invoke the name of the Holy One of Blessings. Hello, Heno Verahe Avotenu Vahimotenu. May our God and the God who blessed any of the generations past bless all those who are assembled here and the people we love with peace and prosperity and safety. Protect this school and those who will learn in it that it may be a beacon of wisdom and teach us to employ the ways of James Morris Lawson Jr., the path of nonviolent protest. Remind us, as he did, to mentor others when we speak truth to power. And help Nashville and its diverse citizens model for all of Tennesseans, Americans, and the whole world what it really means to see the divinity in all living things. Blessed are you, the holy power that animates the universe. Misha Neha and who creates a variety of creatures. There's a Hebrew word you know. It goes, Amen. I am now going to invite my friend and yours, uh, Vice Mayor Jim Shulman, to come up to the beat. County, it is my privilege to welcome you to the 60th annual State of Metro address in this beautiful new school in Bellevue. Um, Lachlan Cook, that was amazing, truly amazing, and I think we. And um, I'd like to see you come to the next council meeting, please. Um, so um, I woke up this morning uh, more tired uh, than I did yesterday when I woke up, maybe because I didn't sleep well uh, before this past Tuesday's uh, special meeting of the council and didn't sleep well after it. <clears throat> this city, Nashvilleans, this mayor, and this council have been through a great deal in the last month. One month ago today, we as a community were devastated by the mass shooting at the Covenant School. We will never forget that day. We will never forget those innocent lives taken from us, the people of that school, and the brave men and women who served us that day. Since that day, which was a month ago, we have experienced tremendous grief, protest, demonstrations, expulsions of legislators, reinstatements of legislators, more marches, um, unfortunately more shootings, um, several major votes on a stadium, a visit by the first lady, a visit by the vice president, 
Today's meeting of the council, which I'll bang in in just a minute, will be the sixth time that this body, this council body, has met this month in April. We usually meet twice. I don't really like seeing the council members that much. <coughs> I thought twice was enough. Without going back to the last four years, we together as a city have experienced tragedies and other unprecedented situations that have made living difficult. But we have found ways, as Councilmember Toombs uh, very well said, we have found ways, sometimes challenging, to work through issues and problems and to keep functioning as a city and as a government. The mayor of Nashville and Davidson County is elected to lead this city. Uh, when we elect that individual for a four-year term, that individual knows what problems are existing at the time he or she takes office. For our current mayor, I'm not sure if anyone could have predicted what lay ahead. And I think I said that last year. <laughs> I was trying to think um, last night before I fell asleep several times. Uh, I was trying to think of a, um, of a funny analogy basically to this four-year term <clears throat> for the mayor and for the council and for the school board and for everybody else at Metro. Um, and the, the only one that kept popping into my mind, uh, or at least the only one that came to my mind that I could say in front of a televised audience, um, was the episode from the I Love Lucy show uh, where Lucy and Ethel went to work in the candy factory. We're putting, we're put on the line, the factory line to wrap chocolates. Obviously some of you have seen it. <clears throat> if, if you haven't seen it, you ought to take a look at it. Uh, if you remember, the chocolates came out at a reasonable play, the pace at first, and then started speeding up, and then sped up some more, and then some more, and I, I would have liked to have been on that line because I remember Lucy eating a lot of the chocolate. <laughs> Feels like that. Uh, this four-year term has in some ways really been just like that. There were problems we were working on, and then more problems appeared, and then more things happened, and it just kept coming. It has not been easy for what we have all experienced I appreciate all of you. I really do. Um, the people of Nashville, our Metro employees, the press, all the distinguished guests that are here, the members of the Metro Council, members of the school board, all the department heads, and I appreciate the mayor. this meeting of the Metropolitan Council to order. Today is Thursday, April 27, 2023, and this meeting is being called to hear from the Honorable John Cooper, the Mayor of Nashville and Davidson County. Without objection, we will suspend Rule 31 regarding the regular order of business. Seeing no objections, good. The rule is suspended. With that, ladies and gentlemen, no, you're not allowed to object. <laughs> You notice I didn't look over there very long. With that, ladies and gentlemen, members of the council, members of the school board, everyone is a distinguished guest. It is my great honor to introduce the ninth mayor of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, the Honorable John Cooper. this beautiful place. 
Vice Mayor Schulman, Pro Tem Tombs, Council Members, fellow Nashvilleans, Deputy Mayor Brenda Haywood, who has... Thank you. And then my partner in all of this these years, my wife, Laura. Thank you for being here. I am honored, I am honored to join you today at this magnificent new James Lawson High School. And can you believe it, the 60th annual State of Metro. Now, Reverend Lawson taught and trained national students in the principles of nonviolent protest, molding young civil rights leaders like John Lewis and Diane Nash, and naming our first new high school in 15 years for Nashville's great teacher of nonviolence is a powerful moment worth celebrating. This is a $150 million facility, and it's one of four completely new schools funded this term. For comparison, six new schools. Six new schools were funded in the previous four terms. And Principal Schaefer, you're gonna have a lot to be proud of. And we're expecting big, big things in the years ahead. Teachers and students deserve to teach and learn in first class facilities. And the council and I, We are so proud to have invested over half a billion dollars in capital improvements in schools since 2020. Half a billion dollars. Now, three years ago, I presented, Jeff Syracuse was sitting right behind me, a, a crisis budget in an empty council chamber during the pandemic and we faced multiple emergencies. And we were forced to make tough decisions to keep our city moving forward. Decisions about our ability to keep the lights on. And then in 2021, that brought an investment budget that included significant increases in funding to first responders and making MNPS teachers the best paid in Tennessee. And then last year was a budget for full recovery, turning the page on crisis and addressing a generation of problems that had been handed down. And it's working. The investments we've made together have taken our city government from crisis to recovery. And this state-of-the-art new high school is just one of those many investments. In our 60th year as a metropolitan government, Nashville is stronger than at any point in our history. We have the strongest job market in the whole country, having just surpassed Austin, Texas for that title. Yes. Our unemployment rate is a mere 2.8 percent. We're in the 97th percentile in the country for job growth and wages are rising at the fifth highest rate in the nation. And even with our growth, our cost of living is lower than Austin, Dallas, Salt Lake, Denver, Miami, or Atlanta. We remain the lowest tax city and the lowest tax state in the country. And even Austin, Texas, that's in another state with no income tax. Homeowners pay an effective rate 29% higher than we do in Nashville. And homeowners pay a higher tax rate in cities all across Tennessee. Memphis, Knoxville, Chattanooga, much less Jackson, Clarksville, Johnson City, Oak Ridge, Cookville. And then we can feel that our city is alive, growing. It is the envy of cities across the country. And so the choice before us is not whether to stop growing, it is how we will grow. To grow with investment, to make us a better city on the other side of all this growth. Public investments in national streets and parks and schools have to keep pace with private sector investments in our skyline. Now we all know NBJ's crane watch is one way to track private sector growth. 
But that alone doesn't measure a city. A truly great city tracks police recruit classes, school funding per student, neighborhood infrastructure, affordable housing units created. These are the kind of metrics you measure if you're building a great city. Now, when my term began, the threat of state takeover of Metro's finances loomed over Nashville. But in this term, there have been generational, historic financial improvements. Gone are the days of selling property to balance the budget, of not being able to fund basic repairs and maintenance. Our cash reserves were once totally depleted. Now we have a fund balance policy and two months of reserves. Finally, Metro has a rainy day fund to weather any storm, whatever form it takes. Earlier this year, the Kroll Bond Rating Agency recognized our financial turnaround by giving Metro a AA plus rating one notch below triple A. Fantastic. And the council and Kelly, Kelly Flannery and our entire finance department should be applauded for this result. Thank you. It is a resort for fiscal stewardship. And all the progress we are making as a city is possible because we fixed finances. Now these last three years have been a golden age of fixing government. You really have made possible by investments from taxpayers, federal assistance, and stewardship. We are funding public safety in Nashville. 526 new positions across police, fire, EMS, emergency management, and E911. Are we ready for the next one? Our public school funding per student is up 46% in this term. cities were forced to use federal relief funds to sustain basic operations, our financial stability enabled Nashville to make generational investments in our core priorities. That's why no city in America was able to commit a greater share of federal pandemic relief funds into housing than Nashville. We were able to invest five times the national average because we are good stewards. Now, more on that later. But we have fully recovered from crisis, and this budget is the foundation for tomorrow. We have improved the fundamentals of government on the balance sheet and in service delivery all across Davidson County. We have done right by our Metro employees, the people who make this city work for you every day. And that continues this year with a pay increase of 7% across all Metro. A 4% COLA for all Metro employees for the second straight year. For the second straight year. And once again, Nashville is a national leader in wage growth for our employees. Now in this speech, I'm going to highlight how our Metro employees are doing two things. One, putting our investments to work for your neighborhood every day. And two, to talk more about how we're creating a platform for innovation to address the new problems of a growing city. And you're going to hear dramatic improvements across every category. So let's start at 5 a.m. in Nashville. Our Metro Waste Services team is clocking in for the day. There are over 100,000 residents who participate in recycling. They used to have once a month pickup, but as earlier of this year, curbside recycling pickup is now every other week. This is a huge step towards achieving zero waste goal. They get a little later in the morning at 5.30, MMPS bus drivers are on their way to pick up kids for school. Some of these same bus drivers rushed to the Covenant School just a few weeks ago to transport students shaken by the attack. Now, when I took office, the starting pay for bus drivers was just under $15 an hour. Now, the starting pay is nearly 50% higher at over $22 an hour. And last, last 
last year, some bus drivers saw as much as a $14,000 raise. Now, paying Metro employees a living wage is something I felt strongly about since my first day in office, and I'm proud that we've established $18.50 minimum wage across every department, a true living wage in Nashville. Now, a little bit later, just before 6 o'clock, the sun begins to rise over Nashville, and many Nashvilleans are waking up in homes that have dramatically risen in value. People across the country value what we have here. But ensuring every family has access to affordable housing is not a Nashville-specific challenge, but it is a challenge that we have to face head on. Now, two years ago, we formed an affordable housing task force to guide our city strategy. And this task force set a very ambitious goal of making available 5,000 housing units per year for residents making under 80% of area median income. Now, now that sounded like one of those government goals that maybe just wasn't going to happen, and, and no time soon. But today, I can proudly say we will put more than 5,000 units into the pipeline the next fiscal year, meeting that goal. And a majority of those will be for residents at 60% of AMI or below. And here's how. We created a new dedicated housing division in Metro Planning. We have grown the Barnes Fund. In my term, the Barnes Fund allocations will surpass $140 million. That means 75% of the Barnes Fund grant all time have happened in this term. And next year, for the third year in a row, we will invest $30 million in the Barnes Fund, a key task force recommendation. But we're no longer relying on just the Barnes Fund. We've created a $20 million catalyst fund for preservation, and we've launched the mixed income pilot and for perspective. Back in 2019, Nashville added under 1,000 units of affordable housing. Now, during this current year, through all of these tools and investments, we expect more in this year, 3,700 units to come online. And today, I have a proposal to the Metro Council Special Committee on Tax Abatements. Thank you, Berkeley, for being here in the first row. Let's double down on what works by increasing the mixed income tax abatement program from a $3 million cap to a $5 million cap. And with that additional investment, and with that additional step, and with the tools that we've added, our fantastic housing director, Angie Hubbard, believes our 5,000 unit goal for affordable housing will be achieved this next fiscal year. Wow. Wow. Now, in our day in Metro, a few minutes later at 7 o'clock, 7.05, the bell rings, and high school students across Nashville are beginning for a day of learning. And I've long said that the people who care for our kids should be able to afford to care for their own kids. And over four years, we have made a generational investment to improve schools and added nearly $300 million for our school system in new recurring spending. Incredible. And that includes... Another year of $100 million of new spending in this budget. Wow. And that's, that's the largest increase over a four-year period in the history of Metro by far. And over half of that new spending goes directly into the pockets of our teachers and support staff through salary increases and benefits at every level. Now, this is a state that's in the bottom 10 in the country in per student spending. And Nashville has stepped up while the state contribution has remained completely flat to Davidson County. Nashville has stepped up. And as an example, when I came into office, Metro, a Metro teacher with 12 years of experience was making $48,000. Now, that same teacher with a revised salary curve, steps, a cost of living adjustments, is making over $67,000. That 
is a 39% increase and our teachers deserve it. Investments in our teachers are paying off. While teacher turnover is rising nationally after the pandemic, in Nashville, we are seeing turnover go down. When I took office, Metro was spending almost $3,000 less per student than the national average. Now we are ahead. And in just one term, we've done something unimaginable a few years ago, and we should be proud. We have increased our per pupil spending by nearly $5,000 to $15,660 per student. That is a 46% increase from what we were spending when I took office. It's historic. And it is the biggest increase that I know of in the whole country. And if Dr. Battle hears of a bigger one, I know she'll tell me, but it is historic. Now let's hear more from T.J. Williams, who teaches automotive technology at Maplewood High School. T.J. For me personally, the teacher raises the past few years have had a huge impact. I had heard about raises for so long, but never saw them come my way. But not this one. So when the races did come along, it was a blessing I wasn't expecting. And that blessing has not only made me feel supported and appreciated, but it's helped me to take better care of myself and serve my students. I also tutor elementary students at the school and like to use the extra cash for the piggy bank for their snacks. The extra money means I can provide for the kids in ways I wasn't able to before. For me, that's what matters most. It is always about the kids, and I'm grateful for the resources and opportunities that have allowed me to go above and beyond for them. Thank you, TJ. Now, as Nashvillians commute to work, getting a little bit well, further along in the day, they're driving on streets maintained by our hardworking NDOT crews. Last year, Metro paved 240% more road miles than in the year before. And thanks to the hub and infrared technology, potholes are being repaired quicker and more effectively than ever. In the last four years, we've completed over 1,000 separate capital projects aimed at preventing roadway flooding and managing storm water so that we can keep the roads open here in Nashville. And then commuters on WeGo bus routes from Madison to East Nashville, Whites Creek, Dickerson Pike, Antioch, the nation's Bordeaux, all across the city are seeing benefits from another city investment. When I ran for mayor, I committed to creating covered, well-lit bus stops where riders can wait safely and comfortably. And since I took office, WeGo has installed 76 new bus shelters to make commutes easier and safer. That's nearly percent increase from four years ago and North Nashville we go riders will soon see their commute times cut by 20 to 30 minutes in each direction how the dr. Ernest Rip Patton jr. North Nashville Transit Center who's named for the legendary civil rights leader and freedom rider we've broken ground on the new facility and it is set to open up next year in spring of next year. Now, once that facility is open, the transit hub will give North Nashville residents direct access to neighborhoods, to jobs. East Nashville, Metro Center, Germantown, Midtown, Hillsborough Village, Wedgwood. And then in our near future, we're adding another major mobility hub on the East Bank. And this growing transit network will give Nashvilleans more affordable and reliable transportation options. Now, as we go through our day in Nashville, folks are busy at work, learning at school, running errands, volunteering at a nonprofit. But as we experienced recently, sometimes the unthinkable happens. And a month ago today, almost at this point in the morning, it happened here in Nashville. Six innocent souls were taken from us because of gun violence at Covenant School. It was Nashville's worst day. Our city's heart was shattered, and we continue to pray for and assist the families and the community members during the aftermath of this tragedy. And we want those families to be the last in Nashville to know that unimaginable pain. And like all of us, I am hopeful that we'll see common sense gun violence legislation passed this summer at the special session. Amen. Amen. 
And last week, I joined the mayor of Chattanooga, Knoxville, and Shelby County to recommend 10 policy proposals to reduce gun violence that's been proven effective in other states. And this budget funds our own health department to begin a gun lock by mail program inspired by the success seen last year in Shelby County. But let us here today show our deep appreciation for the first responders who prevented a horrible day from being worse. That's the emergency call center operators, the firemen, the paramedics, the police officers running to danger, acting with clarity and precision to save lives. Now, some of these national heroes are with us today, and I'd like to ask them to stand to be recognized. of you. On our darkest day, your courage shone through. Your service inspires us. You are our heroes, and your bravery will never be forgotten. Now, that tragic day is an important reminder why it's essential, essential that Metro continue to support our first responders. Four years ago, first-year officers made $49,000. Now, with this budget, they will make $65,000. Police officer pay is increased by 32% over these four years, unmatched by our peer cities. For example, over the same four-year period, police officer pay in Austin was up just 10.5%, 10% in Denver, 4% in Memphis, 4% in Baltimore, 13% in Raleigh. The men and women charged with protecting our city deserve a job that pays well and has great benefits. Yes. Yes. And we're adding more officers at a higher rate than ever to make Nashville safer. On July the 3rd, the chief and I will get to swear in my 470th new officer since becoming mayor. 470. And with the next two recruiting classes, I hope to get to 500 this fall before September. Now, a lot of that is due to the incredible leadership of Chief Drake, who's shown the city and the entire country why MNPD is a model police force. And I just want to thank the chief and our department. Yes. We can hear more about that from Captain Raymond Jones, who's a 16-year veteran of the Metro Police Department. Morale for the department has increased tremendously. There are a lot of reasons for that. I am deeply appreciative of Chief Drake's emphasis on officers' quality of life, including new mental health resources. We can definitely feel the increased investments from the city too. Now we've also 
significantly bolstered our emergency response resources to meet the safety needs of a growing city. Over four years, we have funded 131 new firefighters, including 39 more in this year. So our department now meets the national standard of five per company responding to an emergency or rescue situation. <laughs> Wasn't possible a few years ago. And in fact, this year's $15 million investment for Nashville Fire will mean the department, are you ready for this, will be at full staffing for the first time since 2001. <laughs> since 2001. We're paying firefighters more, and the star si starting salary for firefighters has increased 28% over the last four years. We've added 115 paramedics who have also seen a 33% pay increase, or roughly $21,000 each. And they are needed. Our emergency communication center is fielding roughly 3,000 calls a day. To handle that volume, we've added 54 new emergency communication staff, and starting on Monday, when a new class graduates, there will be 39 more 911 call operators. Now, despite this, yes, that's what's making the whole system flow. And despite the increase in call volume, our investments mean we're staying ahead of the curve. And since bringing in Director Martini and fully staffing E91, we've seen a 12% improvement in response times. Thank you, Director. And, and Chief Swan, we're adding 81 new fire trucks and ambulances. 677 new police vehicles to better respond to emergencies. And in this year's budget, General Services will add 21 new positions and establish an overnight shift for servicing Metro vehicles. Yes, first time in a long time. Because we want to keep those vehicles on the road instead of in the lot waiting to be serviced. Now, we must give our first responders the resources they need to continue responding with speed, efficiency, and professionalism, just as they are doing right now. Now, throughout the day, in this day of Metro, our homeless outreach teams are working with our unhoused residents. Homelessness is our city's most human challenge and we join other cities in the country in this great concern. But here in Nashville, we are stepping up to meet the challenge. One year ago, I declared Nashville a housing first city and announced an ambitious $50 million homeless response plan that finally matches the magnitude of the problem. Now we're just in the first phase of a three-year plan, but I'm excited to say we are outpacing our goals. Last year, we set a goal to house 25 chronically unhoused people each month. Now, we have met and exceeded that goal, and we're now housing 31 per month, and we will grow from there. And we need to continue to grow our capabilities and serve 50 and then 60 a month. And 383 chronically unsheltered people are now in housing due to the work done in the past 12 months. That's incredible, and thank you. And we've been able to close unsafe homeless encampments at Brookmead Park and Caldwell Wentworth soccer fields. And that success has been made possible thanks to our community partners doubling our recurring investment and adding more than 20 new staff focused on outreach, housing navigation, and landlord engagement. And we're launching our first standalone Office of Homeless Services in July. And in the next 18 months, 758 additional units are coming online at over 10 sites to serve our unhoused neighbors here in Davidson County. At the current pace, we will house all of Nashville's chronically homeless population in the next three years. There is 
much more work to be done, to be sure. But what's most important in all of these numbers are the people. Housing is health care. We are saving the lives of our most vulnerable neighbors using a trauma-informed approach. And now Elizabeth Mallard, who has experienced the struggle firsthand, let's hear from her. The Metro Homeless Impact Division is a lifesaver in more ways than one. I was living at Brookmead Park before I got help. In between living in the elements and my alcohol addiction, I was slowly dying. Then I got connected to resources and everything changed. When I was offered temporary housing, I was finally able to come out of survival mode and slowly adapt. I was able to take my life back. Every step I took in this journey, someone was there alongside with me, guiding me through the process. They didn't just put me somewhere and forget about me. They checked in on me, they supported me, they rooted for me. Getting back on my feet was like learning to walk for the first time. But every time I fell, the resources and people in my corner were there to pick me up. Now, I have my family back, I have my life back. I'm connected with a psychiatrist and a therapist. I'm 28 months sober with the lifetime of living ahead of me. I got my own None of that would be possible without the support of the Metro Homeless Impact Division. They've helped me restore my dignity and hope for the future. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, we've talked a lot about things happening around Nashville. And one thing that isn't happening is you're no longer seeing MNPS teachers forced to choose between career and family. Now, I recently heard from Allison Brooks, a teacher at Apollo Middle School who has been with MNPS for 17 years. Allison and her husband found out last August they'd be adopting a baby girl with only a month to prepare for her arrival. Before last year, Allison would have had to use vacation and sick days to take off work to welcome her new daughter. But extending paid family leave to teachers meant that Allison could focus on being a mom without having to worry about how she could keep her job. So that's a great achievement. Thank you, MNPS. And in the end of the day, so much of what we do is about people using our role in government to help people and make their lives better. And that's how I think about our behavioral health investments, which is part of our holistic approach to public safety. Keeping the community safe isn't just about investing in police. We've built co-response teams for residents struggling with mental health. Partners in Care, which pairs mental health professionals with police officers, began in late 2021. It has been an enormous success. Last year, it answered over 3,000 calls, and less than 4% of those calls resulted in arrests. And I'm excited to announce that Partners in Care, which is currently running out of Central, South, North, and Hermitage precincts, will be adding 14 new positions and expanding to the Midtown Hills and Madison precincts later this year. And and focusing on behavioral health as part of emergency response is just good policy. And that's why for the first time we've added a non-law enforcement response when appropriate to free up ambulances and allow officers to focus on preventing and solving violent crimes. The REACH pilot began in February and it's early, but they've already responded to 157 incidents and most of those incidents are resolved on site. For some, the residents are transported to a crisis treatment center. Now, before REACH, all of those situations would have included a law enforcement response or an emergency room visit. So this has been a successful rollout for our city. And thank you. To and continuing on with our day in Metro, when school lets out in the afternoon, thousands of MMPS students will participate in after-school programs around the city. Our job is not done when the bell rings. So we've increased funding for the Nashville After Zone Alliance, or NASA, by $2 million over the past years to support new summer programming and transportation to after-school activities for over 1,000 students. Every 
MNPS student now has a laptop and the internet thanks to a $24 million investment we made during the pandemic. And we created an out-of-school locator, a database for families across our city. Parents can use this online tool to find programs from over 60 different organizations throughout Nashville for their kids. And then in the afternoon, our litter removal crews. We're a city. We have to worry about all of our problems. But they're, they'd be ending their shift in the afternoon. But in 2022, we removed 751 tons of litter. That's a 57% increase from the year before. Thank you to those crews for their hard work. And we're stepping up our litter removal efforts further, including $4.6 million investment and six new positions focused on cleaning up and sweeping our streets. We stabilized our trash services after the bankruptcy of our largest contractor last year, and with renewed focus on litter, we can become one of the cleanest cities in this country. A great goal. Now, in the afternoon, by the time you get to 4.30 in the afternoon, the playgrounds and our parks are full of joy. And investing in neighborhoods has been our top priority since day one. We are currently investing $3.3 billion in over 800 neighborhood improvement projects. And you can view these projects online and track our progress on everything from improving community centers to replacing stormwater culverts to adding sidewalks. Now, one direct pipeline into neighborhood investment is participatory budgeting, or PB. At a time when democracy in Tennessee is a lot on people's minds, Metro is demonstrating a revolutionary grassroots approach to budgeting that can lead to quality of life improvements in our neighborhoods. For example, the new mural honoring civil rights attorney Alexander Luby, a new HVAC system for the Pearl Cone Gym, speed cushions on streets like Haynes Park Drive. Participatory budgeting was such a success in Bordeaux and North Nashville during its first two years that we're funding it countywide with $10 million of ARP money in this calendar year. It was a bold experiment and it is working. And here's Fabian Bednay from my office to tell us more. Over the years, we have seen some great projects get proposed, funded, and then completed. Most recently, we celebrated the opening of the new Hartman Park Playground. Hartman Park serves as a resource and tool for the community, especially for Nashville's youth. Whether it's playing youth football, exploring the outdoors, or playing on the playground, Harmon Parks plays a critical role in the kids' lives, which is why it was so important to the community that the old playground was replaced. Its equipment was old and unsafe. If you fell, you fell on asphalt. Ready to make a change, the community submitted a participatory budgeting proposal. Now the neighborhood kids have a safe environment to play, grow, and explore in. As a community, we want the very best for our kids, for our future. And the participatory budgeting allows for the community to advocate for just that. Cyclists and runners are hitting our greenways to get some exercise. Now, four years ago, traveling from Hermitage Hills neighborhood to the Stones River Greenway to Ravenwood Park to Percy Priest Trailhead on a bike meant you had to travel on local streets and cross two major roadways. Now you can get there exclusively using our greenway network. And this is the kind of connectivity that we're committed to providing. With 10 additional miles of greenways are in the planning and design phase right now. And then in the sunset time, in the evening, families are out walking their dogs in neighborhoods all across Nashville. I certainly do. And in many neighborhoods, residents feel safer because of traffic calming. And since October of 2019, we have funded 100 traffic calming projects in neighborhoods. And another good reason to feel safer, frankly, is the new license plate readers being piloted throughout the city. LPRs, 
VRs are a proven technology that allows us to solve serious crimes faster. Now, I'm grateful to the council for helping design a six-month pilot program that deploys this new tool while protecting residents' privacy and civil liberties. LPRs will extend Metro Police's efforts to immediately address robberies, pedestrian and cyclist hit and runs, street racing, missing person situations, and violent crime. So the question on all our minds is, is this working? Well, just a few weeks ago, an LPR detected a stolen vehicle near Gallatin and Briley Parkway. Within one minute, MNPD monitored the vehicle safely using Air One, one of the two new helicopters that have been funded in my term. Air One positively identified the vehicle using high-tech cameras unavailable to our old Vietnam era aircraft. And then officers apprehended the suspect. They found two Glock 23 pistols and enough fentanyl to kill 2,000 people. Thank you, MNPD. I hope the council will approve the use of LPRs moving forward at the completion of this pilot. Now, as the day concludes, Nashville's nightlife scene comes to life. Yes, we do have a nightlife scene. And we are proud of being a world-class destination, but our millions of visitors and thriving downtown also creates new challenges for our growing city. And these challenges require innovative solutions and effective city management. Our downtown must be a place to work and live and be a place for local families, not just tourists. So we're instituting guardrails to ensure that our downtown continues to thrive while being safe, clean, and enjoyable. Guardrails, like sidewalk bending regulations to clean up our streets and make our downtown sidewalks safer. New requirements that construction projects keep sidewalks open. Common sense. Common sense limitations on entertainment transportation vehicles to improve the flow of traffic. We are working to protect our quality of life. And Nashville's new director of nightlife joins a network of professionals tasked with making their downtown safe and livable. Cities like Amsterdam and Washington. Now one of our first targets is dialing down the noise to find harmony between visitors and neighbors. So we are adding two positions to our Office of Nightlife and two more in Codes Department specifically to deal with noise enforcement. Great. First time ever. Now here is Downtown Partnership's Tom Turner with more about what we're doing downtown. Over the last four years, Metro's partnership and leadership has been key. Thanks to Metro, we're cutting down on traffic congestion through entertainment vehicle regulations. We're restoring a sense of order through vending regulations and making our sidewalks usable and safe. We're creating a safe, clean, active, and attractive downtown with a refreshed Church Street Park and updates to the Walk of Fame Park, too. MMPD now has the Entertainment District Unit to better respond to downtown's unique needs. We're also restoring and rebuilding our historic 2nd Avenue and refocusing on 1st Avenue as well as the riverfront. With Metro's help, we are transforming downtown from good to great. into your metro government, the dedicated public servants working for your family and this city every day, rain or shine. In its 60th year, Metro Nashville is more productive, more diverse, and more effective than ever. We have improved basic government services. We have course corrected for years of underinvestment. And you've heard powerful examples and how just four years we've reset city priorities. 
public school funding per student is up 46 percent. We've added 526 new emergency personnel positions. We've housed 383 chronically homeless residents in the last 12 months. Bus driver pay is up nearly 50 percent. Teacher turnover is down in Nashville despite being up nationally. Police officer pay is up 32 percent. E91 response times are 12 percent faster. We're delivering sidewalks 50% faster and 20% cheaper. Teachers have paid family leave for the first time, over half a billion dollars in capital spending for our schools. And we lead the nation in the use of federal relief funds for affordable housing. And our plan is 5,000 units of affordable housing next year from our own recurring efforts. At the same time, we're innovating to solve Nashville's new challenges by creating, that are created by growth, but we have to respond to them, creating a platform for the next generation. We've created Nashville's first departments of transportation, the first division of housing, the first department of homeless services, the first office for nightlife. We've made Nashville a housing first city and we're seeing real results. We've invested more than ever in our police department, but also recognize there's more to public safety than law enforcement. We've become a national model through successful programs like Partner in Care and Reach and the Village to serve at-risk youth and their families. Now looking ahead, this level of innovation and investment must continue for Nashville to thrive. With this council, we've taken on tough decisions. We've adjusted our tax rate up to avoid state takeover and then back down. We have fixed our finances. We took on the billion dollar liability facing taxpayers from the old Titans lease and turned it into an opportunity. We have a smart growth plan for the East Bank that saves the city billions of dollars and gets, and gets, not gives, hugely valuable land back to the city. That plan creates a powerful north-south transit and traffic spine that reconnects neighborhoods. It provides transformational capacity to that increase in capacity to deal with traffic and to create a platform for future mass transit. It will create a live, work, play environment that will propel Nashville into being the most livable city in America. And this plan will provide resources and land for urgent priorities like attainable and affordable housing. We've also embraced inclusive economic growth. What's the point of growth if it's not inclusive? And a renewed emphasis on supporting small business. Now Nashville's first public-private partnership with our oldest institution of higher learning, Fisk University, will be a reality soon. Burris Hall will transform into an innovation and entrepreneur center to create the next generation of Nashville's business leaders. It's fantastic. And perhaps for the first time since John Donaldson arrived here on this actual week back in 1780, Nashville is looking to the river for inspiration and not just industry. Through investments in the Riverfront Park, Wharf Park, our Greenways, Oracle, and a reimagined East Bank, Nashville is poised to embrace the Cumberland River. Our recreation, connectedness, and our built environment will benefit as a result. We are safeguarding the future of Nashville's families also by doing things like building a new juvenile justice center. This 14-acre campus on Brick Church Pike will enable us to implement a family-oriented, trauma-informed approach to justice. And it may be the proudest thing that we will ever get accomplished in this term. So Nashville's future is bright. If we responsibly manage our finances and invest in what works and innovate to meet the challenges of tomorrow, we can be the best city in the United States. Now serving Nashville as mayor, working for the people of Nashville has been the honor of my life. And over the last four years, Nashville has been tested, maybe more than any city in America, or more here in Nashville than in any era it's since the Civil War itself. But we've come out of it 
stronger and better positioned to succeed. And I'm deeply proud of what we have accomplished. And I am unwaveringly confident that our best days are ahead of us. And thank you all for being here. Let me turn this over to the vice mayor to adjourn our council meeting. But um, uh, I need a motion to adjourn from the council. Got a motion properly seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed no. Uh, the council meeting stands adjourned. That wasn't even close to a gavel. Um, and um, I believe there is another individual here to talk. So I will get off the microphone. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Cooper, for your words and for your commitment to serving our city over these last four years. They were incredibly challenging four years, for sure. Uh, good morning. My name is Phil Cabucci. I use they and he pronouns. I'm a proud, gay, genderqueer person, and I spend my days as the founder and executive director of Inclusion Tennessee. Next to me is my good Judy, artist and entertainer, Vidalia and Gentry. At Inclusion Tennessee... At Inclusion Tennessee, we are committed to connecting people, programs, services, and resources that enhance the lives of LGBTQIA people and our community throughout Tennessee. We were founded in 2021 following a 2019 uh, regional community needs assessment, and we are committed to delivering a vision where everyone belongs to a community rooted in love and acceptance. It should be no surprise to anyone in this room that the LGBTQIA community, and specifically our transgender community, our drag artists and our entertainers, those living with HIV and AIDS, and, the, and have, been a, have been at the brunt of attacks from our state legislature over the last year, and their persistent attacks towards our community have been ongoing for a decade plus. As I work in this role every single day, I hear stories and experiences from our transgender, queer, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and queer community who are scared. Right here in Davidson County, they are fearful, they are scared for their lives, they are worried that their joy and their freedoms could be stripped away at any moment. The persistent and consistent attacks on this community, on our community, have gone on for far too long. Our community deserves refuge, equal access to health care, safe space, and most importantly, deserve every opportunity to thrive. There are many communities here in Nashville whose lives have been forged in the crucibles of difference. But it is through our unique and beautiful diversity that we can create a city where every single body can experience hope, joy, and the ability to live with freedom by loving and fighting for the rights of the undocumented immigrants or by demanding with pride that black lives matter or that women's rights are human rights or that LGBTQ lives deserve equity, we are creating a world where peace and love will ultimately prevail with grace and purpose. It is only then when our journey to justice will prevail. As you heard Lachlan share, our young people are carrying an incredible amount of stress and pain. And that will only have a resounding response to their lived experiences in the years ahead. Many students in our community, both high school and at local universities, are currently preparing their finals this week and in the weeks ahead. But a young transgender a member of our community who's been organizing in this community here in Davidson County wanted to share some words with you today who couldn't be here. 
and they said, thank you for your service to Nashville. Thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you to Mayor Cooper. Your words and your kindness have been surmount. However, we don't need solidarity with your words. We need an undying promise of action and a foundation for our, our children and our community to be able to rise from. Be the future that you wished for when you first ran for office. Then find a young person to empower to make that future even better. Pass legislation that makes Nashville a blueprint for the state to follow. Protect trans health care in the city by creating trans refuges. Ensure safe and secure housing options. Invest in our public health infrastructure. Ensure gender affirming care is covered by Metro employee, for Metro employees. And remember that policy needs to be all, should be for one and for all. I echo these sentiments and I thank this trans young person for the, and their countless organizers and the nonprofits and supporters of our community who have supported our work and the work of so many others in this movement for justice and equity. As I end today, I want to thank you, Mayor Cooper and the Metro Council for your commitment to LGBTQIA justice. We have a long road to go, but I know together we can achieve a city where every single person is valued, they are loved, and they are respected uh, for who they are and that they can all together bring a fabulous diversity to Davidson County. Thank you. As Phil said, uh, I am drag entertainer and artist Vidalia and Gentry. I won't be here long. Uh, thank you for having me today, Mayor Cooper. I'm so proud to be here representing the artist and entertainer community that um, adds so beautifully and fabulously to the diverse community of Music City. And on that note, uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome our next musical guest. Uh, you can catch their new single, Hero, everywhere you stream fine music. Please welcome The Lone Bellow.
Joseph Walker, pastor of the Mount Zion Church here in Nashville, Tennessee. Please share with me the final blessing. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your presence and your grace that allows us to serve each second, minute, hour of every day. We thank you for the leadership of our great city, the vision, and all the accomplishments that we have heard today, and those who give their lives selflessly each day to make this place a safer and better place. Remember those who mourn among us, and we pray your protection around those who are most vulnerable among us. We pray, God, that your love will have no boundaries, that we all will love like you love, and will live like you lived, and lead like you led. And now may you do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. It is in your name we pray. Amen. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.